The judgment of set the booths been open. How shall we stand in the great day when every thought and word and action go the righteous shall we? Shall we stand in the great day? How shall we stand in the great day? Shall we be found before in one day? All with our sins are washed away. Decision to abide. Oh, shall we stand in the great day? Oh, shall we stand in the great day? Shall we be before, before him one day? Or will we see? God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is excellent. Uh, we thank God for another evening that he, he has given us so that we can come before him. And uh, before, we begin, before we begin our evening services, I would like us to pray. May we please all rise so that we pray. May we please all rise. Our Father and our God who lives in heaven, Father, we come before you this evening once again. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be here. And we also thank you even for those who are planning to join online. And Father, we are here to hear from you as families. I pray, God, for those families that have lost hope that may this evening they might find hope again. I also pray, Lord, for those families that are not even seeing each other eye to eye, that, Lord, may they find a reconciliation to you from you this evening. And before we get, begin, Lord, we ask you that all the songs that we are going to sing, all the sermons that is going to be given here, that, Lord, may you be fast, the speaker, even before we speak, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we will sing song number 655, Happy the Home When God is There, 655. I'll sing. Happy the home when God is there. In love and peace in every rest. Happy the home. I will start to sing again. Happy the home. Sing. Happy the home when God is there and love fills every breast. When one the wish and one 
the prey and won the heavenly rest. Happy the home where Jesus' name is sweet to every year. Where children all is peace, is fair, and parents hold him six face to face with Christ our Savior. Face to face with Christ our Savior. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Let's sing. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face, what will it be? When with rapture I behold in Jesus Christ who died for me. Shall I behold thee far beyond the starry sky? Face to face in all his glory, I shall see him by and by. Only faintly now I see. With the talking fell between, but a blessed day is coming when his glory shall be seen. Face to face shall I be. shall see him by and by. Watch rejoicing in his presence when our banished grief and pain when the crooked ways are straightened and the dark things shall be seen.
Jesus, song number 248. 248. 248. And then after that, we'll take a request from the audience. Song number 248. There is a name I love to hear. May you all sing. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. again because we love Jesus. Oh, now slower. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Be a choice from one family. Yes. A choice. Sorry. Three, three, one. Oh, Jesus, I have promised 
to serve thee to the end. So we can do it. Oh, Jesus, sing. Oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master. Sister Judy, a choice. A Swahili one. Or we can do number three, a Swahili one. One or two, thank you. One hundred and two. NZK, one hundred and two. Mlango ni pamoyo. Mlango, may you all sing together. Mlango ni pamoyo. Ah. Uh -huh. 
Masiku Ache Mali As we finalize the singing program, 525. My faith has found a resting place, not in a madman creed. 525. 523, sorry. 523, yeah. My faith has found a resting place. May you all sing? My faith has found a resting place, not in a man made green. I trust the heaven living one that he for me will plead. I need no other evidence, I need no other plea. again for me enough for me that Jesus saves this is my fear and doubt a sinful soul I come to him he will not cast me Jesus died and rose again for me. My soul is resting on the word, the living word of God. Salvation is my Savior's name. Salvation through his blood. Jesus. 
Jesus died and rose again for me. Stands up for a bit slow. The great physician is the sick, the lost he can to save. For me is precious blood is shed, for me is life be stand up with our opening song, song number 474. May the choristers lead us. Take the name of Jesus with you. May you all sing. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then where you go, precious name for oh, us. Precious name, oh, how sweet, hope of heart and joy of heaven. Take the name of Jesus ever as a shield from every snare. You gather, breathe out holy name in prayer, precious name, oh how sweet, oh poor the joy of heaven, precious name, oh how sweet. name of Jesus, oh, he thrills our souls with joy, when he's loving us, receive us, and his songs are tongues deploy, precious name, oh, how sweet. Feet. King of kings in heaven will crown him when our journey is complete. Precious name, precious name, oh, how 
heaven we thank you for this wonderful day we thank you for the gift of life we thank you for being with us all through till this particular moment we thank you for this program that we have may this program help us grow in our families in each and every person's home oh dear father heavenly father may you be with our speaker as she come to speak to us may you be seen in her and your name will forever be praised and be glorified. Continue being with us all through, because I pray this, trusting and believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy church. How many are happy to be here today? Are you seem, some seem very dull. Are you happy to be here? Ready for the word of God? Okay. I'll start with my name. I'm Simon. And uh, the super queen is here, Rachel. And uh, today we are here to also feed from the word of God. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to welcome both of us, and uh, that includes the online viewers and the non-Adventists that are also here. Feel at home. This is where we get the, the holy word. Uh, the speaker of today is well known, uh, Pastor Elizabeth Mukoro will be speaking with us today. It is my prayer that uh, the Holy Spirit uh, descend on us so that we understand and comprehend the teaching of today. Have a blessed evening. Good evening. I hope you had a wonderful day. I slept so well. I hope you also slept so well. When uh, Peter was in prison, and death is looming the next day. There was no possibility of escape from prison because Peter was confined in a rock-hewn cell. And the, the doors were iron doors guarded by 16 soldiers. Previously, when the disciples of Christ would be imprisoned, they would escape. For Peter, they felt so that he does not escape. They put him in a, a rock-hewn cell. So and there was no possibility completely of escape. The only thing that they could do was gather in some member's house, church member's house, and pray for a miracle to happen. Many times we have judged the people that were gathered to pray for Peter in the night 
because after he had been set free and he went to that house and knocked on the door, a young girl came called who? Huh? Rhoda. And Rhoda reported, Peter is here. And they said, we'll be cheesy. And people have preached that sermon and said that their prayer lacked faith. That is how people have preached that sermon. It's as if they were not so sure about what they were praying for. They didn't lack faith. Theirs was, no doubt, was not doubt. Theirs was shock. If you study spirit of prophecy, the imprisonment of Peter, you will know why they couldn't believe that that was Peter. It was not doubt. It was shock. There are times when the Lord comes through for you, even you, you are what? Shocked. But there's one statement Ellen White makes about his stay in prison. He says, she says, that night he knows too well he's going to die tomorrow. Because even him, he was not praying that a miracle happens. The apostles were ready for anything. They had already given their lives to Christ. Whatever comes, let it come. If we die, we die. Like Esther. I will go to see the king. If I die, I do what? I die. And White says when he was sleeping, he didn't sleep the way you sleep when you don't have school fees. Now you, when you don't have school fees, you want to call everyone in the night. It's already past 10. You're still calling people. And then you realize everybody you know does not have money to give you. Then you begin looking at the ceiling the whole night and you develop some headache. I didn't sleep. I'm stressed. I'm under pressure. Mama White says this, Peter slept that night a peaceful sleep of perfect trust. A peaceful sleep of perfect trust. I have preached that sermon several times. For the first time, it made sense to me when yesterday I got to the house and I slept a peaceful sleep of perfect trust, not caring what is going on. Those kinds of sleep, you don't force them. God gives you. I thank the Lord we have yet another opportunity to sit at his feet and feed from his word. Uh, someone sent me the link for yesterday's sermon and I decided to watch. I was not keen when my introduction was being made. I was looking at some other things and I want to make a correction. Otherwise, you drab shoulders the wrong way with this church. Probably we may not understand the structures of our church so well. That's an alarm for prayer. Pastor Muchache will tell you. After the local churches, we have the conference, is it? Yeah. I know you never care what happens there. At the conference leadership, we have officers and then departmentals. So every conference has three officers, the president, the executive secretary, and the treasurer. But I noticed I was introduced, I am one of the officers, no. I come from Central Nyanza Conference, not Central Nyanza Field. And I work at the conference, but not as an officer. I think that is important. Otherwise, they will say, squeeze and asema yeye ndiyo. Sayu no jewa unatafuta kitu yoyote kidogo. Yeye ndiyo, officer. I woke up early, not so early in the morning, 
and I found someone had sent me a text, which for me gave me courage. And I knew that God is working behind the curtain. Okay? And I felt God was telling me, focus. Leave the war for me to fight. And this lady has given her details and her name. So if she wanted to hide, she wouldn't have given me all these details. But she says, praise the Lord, servant of God. We are in end times. Prayer as never before. Satan is real. I was one who was invited to hear the case of boys who left Kisumu boys. None called your name in the whole saga. But now an ill motive person want to brainwash people's minds that king's ministers led these boys to leave school. Fight is real. I know all individuals in this issue. None is a king's minister and they brand themselves SDA reformers. I'm glad that was a person seated in that one. She has given me all of her details. So, let's forge on. We shall finish. In the mighty name of who? Let the Lord fight the war. This is what convicts me. When Israel was crossing the Red Sea. Some of these things is good. You read them through the lenses of spirit of what? Prophecy. And I'm encouraging you. Some of these comments you hear thrown left, right, center are from people who are never, never study the Bible and never study spirit of what? Prophecy. Ellen White says this, that when Moses was at the shows and the Lord told him, stand still and you shall see the salvation of, of the Lord. Ellen White says, because the Bible says they were told to go forward. Ellen White says, they didn't wait for the sea to part for them to begin to walk. They began to walk before the sea parted. Their feet were in the cold water and the sea had not yet been what? Parted. But before that, there's something the Bible says. No, after that, if you continue that story, the Bible says that as that was happening, the pillar, there was a pillar of cloud, is it? Because it was during the day. There was a pillar of cloud. It moved from the front to the what? To the back. And stayed between the Egyptians and Israelites. And it says it was night on the Egyptian side. And it was day on the what? That God had to come. Block your enemy as he parts the way for you. I love how the Lord works. So don't let your enemy distract you. Keep moving forward. The Lord knows how to deal with him. Even when he comes with speed. And when he parted the waters and they moved, Pharaoh looked at it and said, this path, we can also use it. Never use a path that has only been cut out for God's children. Don't be deceived. Don't be tempted. And when they moved, 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 the Bible says, the Lord pulled out the wheels of their what? Chat. They were coming with speed and you were on foot with children and animals. The Lord pulled out the wing, wheels of their chariots so that they couldn't move. The Lord knows how to slow down your enemy. Allow me to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. You are a warrior. There is no battle you have ever lost. May this be a conviction in our hearts. That your children, as we all go through different circumstances that are horrifying, terrifying, threatening, 
give your children sleep, to be able to sleep a peaceful sleep of perfect trust. Help our unbelief and grow our faith to always consider moving forward no matter the circumstances that surround us, knowing that you are in full control. This evening, yet again we are here to sit at your feet and feed from your word. May the Holy Spirit take these words, pierce them in our hearts like arrows to cause a conviction and to conversion. This is our prayer in Jesus' holy name. Amen. The book is Job. Before the crown must come, the cross. I have entitled today's sermon When God is Proud of You. When God is proud of you. Move with me to chapter 1 of Job, verse 6. Job chapter 1, verse Six. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. I want you to notice these are not human beings having a conversation. God is spirit, the devil is spirit. Demons are spirit. Angels are spirit beings. So these are spirit beings, not in the physical realm, but in the realm of the spirit, having a what? A discussion. The conversation continues. Then the Lord said to Satan, verse 8, have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him on us. God is bragging about Job. There is none like him on us. A blameless and upright man. One who fears God and shuns evil. Whatever that statement meant, I do not know. But if Job was living in our time, what is our population today? Seven billion plus. There is none like Job among seven billion plus people. And I would confirm to you, even when you think the whole world is corrupt, God's children are still there. When you think all marriages don't work, it is yours that does not work. There are marriages working in this world. So you can't throw up your hands and say, oh, after all, marriage today doesn't work. Which one? You only know viewers. Elijah, at some point, almost gave up. He says, I alone am what? What did the Lord say? Yeah, you think you're alone. How many more do we have that have not bowed down? It could be a corrupt church. 
Never move out of this church because you think it's rotten. When Noah built the ark and they went in eight people with all the animals, all sorts of animals you could think of. And they were there for many days, many days. I think it was a year plus. I go study your Bible well, it was a year plus. Many days. I'll go and counter check, be like the Bereans, study. They're not there for a short time in the ark. That is where they stayed. That is where they helped themselves, relieved themselves. I, mean, I don't know if there was some drainage system. I don't know. But you can imagine, those of us that keep goats at home, have you ever opened for goats to leave that their house? How do you call that house in Dolu? Abila. It's called Abila. Yes. Have you ever opened for goats Abila in the morning? It stinks. But they had to stay there for all those days because that was the only place where salvation could be found. Outside, there was nothing. This church is the ark of God. It smells, it stinks. If you run away, there's no salvation out there. It is where? It is here. This is a hospital for every sick child of God. So don't come here with very high expectations about the children of God. Why is the kanisani? Una expect what wanajua mu aya. Hapa ni wagonjwa tupu wako. Wakila aina, makahaba ni hapa wanapatikana. Hakuna wakovu inje ya kanisi. So kahaba kikuja hapa ndani, it's not your business to start questioning what is she doing in our church. She has come to God's church. God's hospital. So the world is still full of people that God can point and say, this one is mine. Even when you think you cannot see them. So it will be, it will be a lie to say that all men are the same. Unless you have slept with all of them. Lived with all of them. The only man you know is your husband. Apart from the women that have three, four men. So you can't just be looking at any man you meet in church. You are the same. You are the same. Mukotu sawa. Nyani ni yule yule. Amidst so much corruption, children of God still exist. They are there. So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear you? Fear God for nothing. So he thinks, Job is the type that worships God for the things God has given. He thinks Job is the type that is interested in the gifts of God than the giver. It's unfortunate many of us, we are here for the gifts. We are not here for the what? For the giver of the gifts. It's unfortunate, and the Lord knows all of us. Even when you still want to say, I am a church member, I've come to church, God knows our hearts. He knows whether you've come to seek him or you have come to seek his gifts. Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side, you have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. The conversation between these spirit beings in the realm of the spirit ends by God giving Satan permission to torment who? Job. Look at the confidence God has with Job that he can permit 
the devil to torment his life because he's so sure God, I mean Job will never bow down to who? To the devil. There are things we go through in this life. Be very careful before you overreact. You could be going through them because God is proving to the devil that you are actually his child. Some of the sufferings we go through, we go through because God is proud of us. The cross you have to bear is probably because God is proud of you. There's an accusation. She's excelling. She's prospering. She's progressing. Simply because you have built a hedge. Let me tell you, when God builds a hedge of fire around you, whatever hedge it is, no one can come close to you. But you need to know, there are times he can pull that hedge, like he pulled out that hedge from Job to permit the devil to torment him. And he was confident enough, Job was not going to let him down. Can the Lord depend on you? To prove to the world that the wealth we have, whether we have it or not, we can still worship him. Can the Lord count on you? When your marriage is going down, can the Lord count on you and say, oh yeah, this one believes in the institution of marriage. And so this one is able to fight for it up to the end. Can the Lord count on you? Yeah, this one is enjoying marriage because God has built a hedge of fire around her. When the Lord pulls it away, can the Lord still count on you? That we will stick through no matter what. Ama ilikuja tu kidogo hivi and you snapped. Kitu kidogo tu, you snapped. That which you're going through, chances are, listen to me, is because God has withdrawn his protection. Because he's proud of you. And he has to prove to the devil that you will never bow down before him. But many of us have failed that test miserably. At times the cross we have to carry is because God is proud of us. And we shall carry it. It can be so ugly so ugly that when you listen to that story, you wonder, is that Mokoro? I remember at some point, someone made an ugly statement and said, when I just began to preach actively on family life, me, I didn't know I was cut out for family. Me, I was just preaching. And someone made a comment and said, Sasa, unaubiria watu family life, na yako imekushinda. That was the day I went back to this story of Job. And I asked myself, Yangu, me nishinda kweli? Is there a mistake I have made? I said, no, I haven't made any mistake. I'm sure if Job was living in our time, most of you would have said, alitengeneza mali kwa njia mbaya. Sasa ya shetani ya mbaya. I'm very sure. Mungeanza yoruma hapa kansani. Mungeanza yoruma hapa kansani. Na wajua wa SDA. So mali ya mtu inapote aje na siku? Moja. Hii mali lazima ikue ilikuwa ya ilumina? Uh-huh. I'm a sacrifice wa toto kumi in one day. It's not everything we go through, there is something wrong we have done. No! At times we go through it because God is proud of his children. And I looked at this girl. 
And I said, who knows? Your ministry is found where you have been broken. So it's not that the Mokoros have arrived. They haven't. I know many people would want to know, how does Mokoro family look like? Many people would really want to know. We haven't arrived yet. We are just going strong because we have chosen to lean on the everlasting arms. That's all. We understand we are not where we ought to be, but we are certainly not where we used to be. Our dysfunctions don't stop us from talking about the strength that God has given us to be where we are. We will move. We will progress regardless of what circumstances surround us. We are not going to stop and stop, start to murmur and complain. Life has got to move forward. I mean, mutu wa kikufa nyumbani, kuku wanataga, kuku wanakatanga kutaga ati mzea mekufa nyumbani. Tunakamua. That simply tells you life must do what? Move forward. Take heart. God is proud of you. There's nothing wrong you have done. He's just proud of you. And the Lord said to Satan, we have read that. Now, there was a day, before I get to verse 13, another bit I want you to understand that good people also suffer bad things. Did you hear what I said? When you are God's child, you are not excused from suffering. I make this joke. Even vegetarians can get cancer. Uh, strict vegetarians, I know that have diabetes and pressure. And they say, I've never touched meat, not even a man, but they have diabetes and pressure. Good people also suffer bad things. When they start the story of John, not John, Lazarus, in the book of John 11, the Bible says that this, when the sister came, is it the sister of the disciples who came and told Christ, the one whom you love is sick. The one whom you do what? you love is sick. Let me tell you something about Kina Martha's home. Martha and Mary Magdalene plus their brother Lazarus. That was one home where Christ would sleep, eat, bathe. It was like his home. When he was tired and he needed a place to rest, he would go to whose home? It is a home he operated like it was theirs. with freedom, with ease. Have you gotten into someone's house as a guest and you became so comfortable like it's your home? Yeah. That is how he operated in Kinamatha's home. So the one that he loved was sick. Did he go immediately? Did he go immediately? He didn't. In fact, he left him and he did what? He died. Good people suffer what? Bad things. But even when you have to suffer bad things, listen to me carefully, God is still God. He hasn't changed. Don't be the kind that praises the Lord because there are good things happening in your life. And when bad things begin to happen, you begin to doubt whether he exists or not. God has nothing to lose. Even when you die today, he has nothing to do what? To lose. Because God looks at life beyond what you see on earth. God has a more better and a greater life to give you than this which you have today. 
So even if you died today, he has nothing to lose. There are people we have prayed with, pleaded with God, preserve this life. We have done prayers, fasted, and they have ended up dying. It does not mean that the Lord has ceased to be the Lord. He still reigns supreme. He doesn't need to show up when you need him. He can go silent on you until you die. He went silent on John the Baptist. The same guy who said, behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. Now he's in prison. He's asking, go ask him. Is he the Messiah we were waiting for? Why? Because he has not come to save him. And Christ says, go tell him, those that are lame are walking. Those that are blind are seeing. What was Christ saying? I mean, John, you were born for one purpose as a forerunner, to prepare the way for me. Now I have come. You have no more reason to do what? To live. You have emptied yourself of your full potential. You have fulfilled your purpose in life. So even if you die right now, I have nothing to lose. There's a bigger and better life that I have prepared for you. And you, you think you've, if you've accepted Christ, he must be doing you a favor every day. Christianity is not about God doing you favors. So we can't worship God because he's a giver. No. And you're only interested in his gifts. We will worship him whether he shows up or he goes silent. So for some of us, when he goes silent, you now look for some witch doctor. When he goes silent, you now look for a witch doctor. Because it's witch doctors that speak immediately. You want things that are instant. Yes, God, why am I going to, through this? You want to understand. So when God keeps silent, what do you do? Cho. Tanzania. And once you're from Tanzania, you'll come back to your house and kneel and say, hey God, I did not go that far. Forgive me. And then you come to church on Sabbath. But you see in the house, there's some water you were given. There's some charm, powder, what you were given. Some sticks tied. And at times, a woman can put a very tiny stick rolled with some red, I don't know why they love red, some red thread, very tiny, insert it at the hem of your trouser. I tell you, even if you want to go where, you will not go. You'll just revolve. <laughs> they put it. Because you know you are the one who's asking them what to put on. Send it off tea and go. So she gives you the go. The stick is already at the hem of the trouser. So even if you want to go where, you just, shh, you just go round, round. You go back. Say, I want to go somewhere. You go, and for sure you've left. Your, you'll just go round town, come back home. I want to go see my mother. You'll just lorori, 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 back to the house. And one year goes down the line, two years, three, four, five, ten. You have never gone home to see your mother. Because a woman has tied you down. And this is the same thing that strange women do to people's husbands. They just tie you like that. And at times when the Lord says, enough is enough. And that person goes up to their houses. I'm speaking to women whose husbands have been taken. Don't just be happy here, scum. Kneel down. Kneel down. Kneel down and bind and rebuke every form of evil and darkness that has come with this person because he has not come empty. He has come loaded. And a tumonayo, just in case he gets home, where that woman doesn't want him to get, just in case he gets there, mutapigana kwa hiyo nyumba mpaka aseme huko penye nimetoka iko na amadi goes back 
Because you, you're fighting a physical warfare. When it gets tough, the tough gets going to God. Even when he remains silent, keep going to who? To God. Some of these things you engage in, you will find some relief for you. You, the visitor to the witch doctor. But you bind all your generations to the curses that come with it. That is what we are suffering today, most of us. Our lives cannot move because our fathers, our mothers, our grandparents visited altars of evil. We are now suffering those curses. And at times I come with mine. From my my from Kindube, I come with my generational curses. Mokoro comes with his generational curses. From Muturmens. Now they will say, they'll do a biography saying Mokoro comes from Muturmens. And we meet in our house. And then the house becomes unbearable. We begin to fight and we don't understand why we were fighting each other. It is generational curses doing what? Playing out. And if you don't learn to look at it with a spiritual eye, you will begin to react and overreact on things that are beyond your what? Your control. And lose your marriage. Learn to break generational curses. Even you who seated here, I know you are visited, you know. I'm telling you, you are ruining your entire generations to come. You sit. You love it. You love it. Because you know how to protect yourself. Say, so you see what my children, this is what they say. For those, that, for those that have not entered it so much, they say, where we stay, there are too many witches. So they need, they also need something to protect them. Themselves. So that is what they say. Then they go to the witch doctor to protect their children, to protect their homes. And very innocent children, you'll be cut, cut. If you look at your wife and you see three marks, ch -ch -ch, ogosaro, ch -ch -ch. then some powder is put. I've seen some, they cut here, is it? Some people cut here. Some cut here. Some is the stomach. They are protecting their children. Wait when these children grow up and you see how turmoil reigns in their life. Because their children sacrifice to the altars of what? Evil. Nothing moves. Even when God is silent, you would rather die in that silence with the hope of the resurrection morning. Learn to look at life beyond this life. Look at life with eternal interests. I have nothing to lose. If the worst comes to the worst, there is a better home waiting for me. But we want to live like this is the end of life. This is where we stay forever. Such that today when you preach, when you preach Christ is coming, you will be told you are an alarmist. You are an extremist. People don't want to hear that Christ is coming. But oh, you don't need to do this because Christ is. No. Christ, I wouldn't lie to you. Listen to me very carefully. Christ is at the door. But that doesn't mean life stops. He says, occupy till I come. We were not to wait Christ for Christ in idleness. We were to wait for Christ engaged in activities. Not in idleness. Wherever he'll find you, make sure he finds you prepared for his coming. So when God goes silent on you, don't be tempted to walk away from him. Even when he goes silent to the point of death, don't be tempted. A 
kati you holding your child like this and you can see your child dying and someone tells you hii ni uchawi twende nikupeleke mahali tu wacha mtoto akufe atafufuka kwa ufufuo wa kwa usijaribu haven't you read the little time of trouble some of us will not bear it haven't you read Yeah, the little time of trouble coming most of us will not bear it ellen white says god in his grace will decide who sleeps before that time because he looks at your faith it is little but it is sincere this one let me allow it to sleep but why do we cry like people who have no hope some of us will have to sleep before he comes not all of us will see the little time of trouble not all of us so we don't we are not afraid of death at all and god is still god now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house And a messenger came to Job and said the oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them when the Sibians raided them and took them away indeed they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword and I alone have escaped to tell you so Job is still processing that information all his oxen are gone while he's still processing the word of the Lord says while he was still speaking not even In, he had not finished what speaking he said while he was still speaking another also came and said the fire of god fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them and i alone have escaped to tell you listen how people confuse suffering from the devil to be suffering from who god. who was given permission to torment, to torment job it was certain So but listen to what the servants are saying fire from where from God He didn't he didn't even begin to process that information he did not it says while he was still speaking another also came a third one and said the chaldeans formed three bands raided the camels and took them away yes and killed the servants with the edge of the sword and i alone have escaped to tell you he has not finished while he was still speaking another also came and said your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house and suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the young people and they are dead 10 children at a go and i alone have escaped to tell you Let me drive a very strong point home. In this life, don't focus so much on the physical realm. There's another realm called the spiritual realm, where spirit beings dwell. And Paul says, for we are not fighting against flesh and what? against demonic power so he said don't waste your time on what you can see that is not where the war is the war is where things are invisible the realm of the spirit it means therefore that by the time you see a problem with your physical eyes it didn't begin there where did it begin in the realm of the spirit that is where things are cooked and finished before they manifest in the realm of the what the physical because where did the war begin the war began in the spirit realm with the discussion between god and satan that is where it began and i'm very sure job is not aware of that discussion because no one ever told him it is you and i who are aware because we are reading the story I me mean, i don't know who wrote that book whatever but job died unaware of the discussion in the realm of the spirit but he still served his god with all his heart by the time you see trouble in your life like this with your own eyes because that is what is physical 
understand, it didn't begin that time. It is a plot that has been already cooked and completed in the realm of the what? Spirit. So don't fight people. You don't fight your husband. You don't fight your wife. You don't fight your children. You don't fight colleagues in the office. No, don't fight the person you see. That is a conduit of the devil. There's a power that actuates them. They have become an agency of the devil to fulfill his schemes in the realm of the what? Spirit. Nothing just happens. It was planned first before it was implemented. So don't waste your time fighting where the implementation takes place. Spend time fighting where the planning takes place, where the cooking takes place. Move into the realm of the spirit. Shut down the devil there before he can manifest in the physical. And up to now, you're still wasting time fighting in the physical. Say, oh, anakunywa pombe. Oh, akuna waschana wengi. Oh, bibi yangu anakuja sanane. Oh, anifanyi sijui nini. Oh. Before you can approach a spouse and ask them why they're doing the things they're doing, first of all, diminish the demonic power in them in the realm of the what? Spirit. Diminish it completely. Then now talk to them. You'll be talking to a sober person. Before you do that, you'll be talking to a woman that will give you one answer. You will not come back again. Because that is not them. There's a power in them. So we must sit and talk. Not all things require conversation. Some things require battle in the spirit realm. That battle will produce its effects in the physical. Because when you fight there, you will see the effects where? Here. Isn't it Moses that went to fight in the realm of the spirit with Aaron and Ur? And he says, when he lifted up his hands, what was happening down here? They won. It is the activities at the hill that were informing activities where? Down here. And for as long as your prayer closet is inactive, expect nothing to happen physically. It will still be turmoil, war, for as long as you're not praying. And let no one cheat you that they can pray for you. We don't pray for people. We pray with people. Why? When Moses' hand got tired, he did not tell Aaron, let me rest, now you come and do what? It was not Aaron's responsibility. It was purely Moses's. And so Moses still had the responsibility of keeping his hand up. The others just came to support the battle you're going through is not Mokoro's responsibility. It's yours. You must keep your hand up. When you get tired, now call on Mokoro and say, Mokoro, my hand is getting tired. Put a stone that I may sit and lift my hand. So this business of people coming to church, refusing to grow their spiritual lives and believing that until someone prays for them. Let me tell you, even if we pray for you and you don't pray, still nothing will In laziness here, Christianity, happy Sabbath, praise the Lord. God is good. That is what is easy for you. When you're faced with the battle, and we are saying, there is now no time to sleep. People are eco -vita. The enemy has attacked. You, you want to sleep? Pastor, you remember me with my family? As you sleep eight hours, because doctor said an adult should do eight hours. There's no problem. You can even do 10. But you can't do 10 when the enemy has done what? Attacked. Your home is under attack and you can afford to. How do you expect to win warfare? You are under serious attack. Nabadu unalala eight hours. 
fact, doctor said you must have rest. There is time to rest and there is time to fight. When the Lord will give you rest from all your wars, then you can rest. But when the enemy has attacked, you can't sleep. Do you know how they built the wall of Jerusalem? Do you know? One hand had a what? A weapon. Another one was doing what? Billy. Mkono moja ina jenga, ingine iko na weapon. Na we unalala. Daktari alisema mtu mzima 7 to 8 hours. Iko mali inafika, usingizi inafanya nini? Inaisha. Sasa ni vita. Utafunga. If fasting unona wana portray in bad light. Let me tell you something about the devil. The devil knows the things that work to bring him down. So he takes them. Anazipaka matope. Ndiyo sasa tukitaka kuzifanya tutambiwa nyinyi ni watu wa shakahola. Hey, since I started fasting, do I look shakaholic? It is meant to kill your confidence in the very activity spiritual that God has asked us to do. Fasting is a spiritual necessity for you to thrive. Because that is the only way you penetrate and go into the realm of the spirit. There is no other way. The church has its program good. I have no problem. And the church does that to remind you you should not be sleeping, you should be fasting. But I'm telling you, when you get into fasting, you saturate yourself with the power of God. You become spiritually sensitive. So I'm asking, why should someone determine for you when to fast? The church is simply reminding you there is something called fasting. But you don't need to wait until the first Sabbath of every quarter to fast. And there is war raging in your what? In your house. And even when that first Sabbath come, you come to learn about it, that Sabbath. Sea watu mbona wambiangi watu hizi vitu mapema. Sea mungu wanaelewa. Watu wengine kama sisi tukona ulcers. Tukona diabetes. Kwanza hawa tuwa ulcers na diabetes. Si wapendi sana. Sabu utapata wengine wako overweight. Wanaeza fast ku lose weight. Na wakona ulcers, wakona diabetes. Ku lose weight wanaweza fast. Tena wakona kitu inaitua intermittent fasting. Utanona mpaka utashanga. <laughs> Losing weight should be a product of fasting. But it should not be the object of fasting. So if you still want to wait for someone to determine for you when you want to saturate yourself with strength and the devil is working 24-7 to make sure he takes you down. This is not shakahola fasting. Shakahola were fasting to see Christ, is it? This is not, we are not fasting to see Christ. We are fasting to fight a battle. You don't fight battles forever, is it? Yeah. Ata KDF wakienda kupigana, kuna time wanarudi kupumzika. Ndiyo tena wanafanya nini? Wanarudi. And don't think when you fast, you will um, twist God's hand. You can't. I have fasted. Why haven't I seen a change? Everyone has a wilderness experience. And the Lord determines how long you take there. For Israel, it was 430 years in Egypt in bondage. No amount of fasting was going to reduce it. Fasting would only strengthen them to finish those years. So you don't fast to untwist um, God. You fast to get strength to continue with a war. Because every single day is a countdown to victory. If God apportioned, you will be there 20 years. Every single day reduces the 20 years. And you need that strength. So 
in one day, Job lost his children, his wealth, his status. One day, he had to bury ten children. I don't think there's anyone in this world who has come anything, anywhere close to what Job went through. No one, no one, no one. When the Lord permits something to come your way, he is so sure you can bear it. He can. If he allows your wife to die, he knows you can bear it. If he allows that you're widowed at 23, he knows you can bear it. And I know some women will tell you, but when you dog. There are times there are women who are in a chemuka, who are 60, who are in a chemuka. So when I figure out, kill a mutu and a chemuka. They'll call him, Shana Kuja, and he'll come back to you. Show, but come dog. You're only 26. You already have four children. You've not even finished mourning. Bado kumdogo. Majaribu inaweza ikakuja. Sasa usikae hivi sana peke yako. Ye mwili yake na chemuka ako 60. Hame sao mungu walisema. Ye ye ndi umume wa wanani? Waja. Na baba ya? Ya team. So they want to rationalize how a human being feels and grows and develops and give you an advice. I know of people that God has shut down those feelings completely and they never even think of it. And they are raising children in the absence of their husbands and they have kept their husband's name and a home to date. Where Lafu taenda na watoto ine, utoe watoto wetu kindube. Eh? Ati ulienda kuwalewa. Birongo. Alafu watoto wanafika birongo, wanaanza kuulizwa njini ni kina nani? Hapa siku ene. Na watoto wanajua vizuri kwao ni wapi? Kindube. Alafu mnaanza kubutana na watoto. Hey! Nilizika baba yenu. Munaeza wenda mufate mku. Because unaangalia raha yako. Lafu unaenda birongo, unachukua buwana ya mutu. Mwenye ye bibi yake ajakufa. Hame kuambia tu, bibi yangu alienda kwa sababu watu kusikizana. Lafu kitu inakudanganya, ati unaweza ishi yapu. Lafu unakaa. Na watoto wako waine, kutoka kindube. Umeleta birongo. Mepata hapa andani kuna watoto sita. Ama saba. Alafu unazamu ingine. Wawili. Na unakuamili ati sababu niko na mtoto waki. Alafu mwenye birongo hie. Hie is what? Hie is what? Asil. Anatoklezea. Nimerudi kwangu. Na kuna kitu wanambi wanga. Kuna kitu wanambi wanga. Ayayayaya. Muke wa kwanza kiamua na rudi. Hakuna mtu wanaongeaga. In fact, she has full support from that home. That is the day you will hear them say, Sisi muke tunajua ni huyu. Na umeleta hapa watoto ine, vita inaanza. Murudi kwenu, hapa si kwenu, kwanza ni wavulana ulileta. Sisemi ni vibaya kuoleka tena. Paula nasema, you are better off single. Because he knows the complexities that come with it. So mutu wa sikudanganya ati wezi tulia. How will you satisfy your sexual urge? Yani mutu wa nakukriatia sexual urge peke yake. Paka tawe inakuingia kwa kichwa inaanza kukuja. Nisi musi nenuku vibaya. Sijambia mutu wa sioleke. Ninasema. Kando na mahitaji yako ya kimwili, zingatia mambo mwingine pe. Kando na mahitaji yako ya kimwili. 
zingatia mambo mengine watoto wanajua baba yao na wanajua vile anakaa hautawalazimishia baba mwingine tena unamwambia muite dadi wanajaribu da, ni msitu sababu dadi yao iko 6 feet anda dadi yao ilikufa ni shauri yenu mtatafuta mtu anawalipia school fees usipomuita dadi amtaenda shule ai iko vitu tunalazimishianga watoto hata siju tulifika hapo waje wacha nimalize then job arose it means he was shocked usha kwa shocked mpaka ukakaa chini au na nguvu tena i don't know for how long he sat there but the bible says then he arose i'm very sure where he was seated he was thinking you mean i can serve god like this and he permitted he was struggling with a lot of thoughts there is nothing wrong with the struggle of thoughts in your mind there is nothing wrong it is normal it is normal to question why god permitted it it is normal but don't question to the point you begin to doubt him and god job questioned so many things in his mind and the bible says when he processed everything then he arose and when he arose he didn't rise to complain on mama no when job arose he said when he arose he tore his robe shaved his head he fell to the ground and worshiped he didn't fall to the ground to cry he fell to the ground to do what worship he was saying god no matter what i will still worship you no matter what i will never bow down my knee to baal no matter what i will not tread the path to endure no matter what i will never decide i'm going to see some someone who prays for people in kibera slums said no matter what i may not understand i am still worshiping you because you're still god worshiped and he said naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return there the lord gave and the lord has taken away blessed be the name of the lord listen to verse 22 the last one in all this job did not sin nor charge god with what wrong Why are you afraid to lose your property? Why? Why are you holding on to it so tightly that you're so scared to lose it? You can't find peace when you lose it. Why are you scared? Sometimes we fight over homes that we want to build. I have no trouble whether you build a 10 bedroom home, but we don't need to fight about it. Even if you gave me a one bedroom house, you gave me. Eh? Me I'm waiting for the new heaven and the new earth where we shall build and stay in them. Learn to look at life in light of eternity. This is not our home. It is not not all these things we cling to the lord will clean them up with fire all I'm telling you all all the 
these vehicles we drive, someone now will say she is beginning to preach extremism, that people should not drive. All these vehicles we drive, all, the Lord will clear them with fire. There is nothing in this earth that we shall go with to where? To heaven. If the Lord permits that we lose them, for circumstances beyond us to understand, do not forsake God. Bow down to worship. If there is a moment you should worship God, it is in your worst moment. Someone has sung a song, I'm not a good singer. For the God of the mountains is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. For the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. He's still God. He has nothing to lose. If you sleep today, there's a better life coming. If you never have the wealth of this life, there's a greater inheritance awaiting you. Provided you don't bow down to worship Satan. I pray no matter what we go through, we will never worship Satan whatsoever. Heavenly Father, this is not our home. But there's a life to live as we await your second coming. We are bombarded on every side. There seems not to be rest for us. It is one thing after the other like Job. When we are just recovering from one battle, the devil introduces another one. Give us the strength to endure to persevere until we get used to suffering. Until we care no more whether it is there or not. But we are determined to let the world of darkness know no matter what we go through, we will never bow down and worship the devil. We'll still worship you in good times. Even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will still worship you. Even though we walk through the waters, we will still worship you. Through the fire, we will still worship you. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah say, we will not bow down. For we know the Lord we serve will deliver us. And even if he does not, it does not reduce him from being God. He is still our God. We will not worship Baal. Lift our thoughts away from this world and its things. Lift our thoughts from thinking that this is our home. May we learn to look at things in light of eternity. At times you will go silent on us. You are still God. There's a season for everything. There's a time we will have. There's a time we will lack. You're still God.
and we are excited and comforted to know that some of these things we go through is because you're proud of us. And so we shall carry the cross with a lot of joy in our hearts. With a lot of confidence. With a victorious fortitude. Knowing that it doesn't matter to us how long it will take. For you're not controlled by time and space. We will bear our suffering with a lot of joy. With a lot of patience. With a lot of perseverance. Because God still reigns. May your will be there. May your children be comforted with these words. May they find peace in their hearts as they go home. May they move forward with life knowing you are taking care of their mess. May they wake up with strength knowing the circumstances that surround them is purely God's to deal with. Tonight, someone has never slept. Give them a peaceful sleep of perfect trust. Tonight, someone has never healed from whatever circumstances they went through. There's so much bitterness and anger inside. There's resentment. Tonight, replace it with the spirit of forgiveness. There is one who has been tormented by demonic power and have never found peace in their lives. They can't sleep in the night. They dream bad dreams. Things walk in their bodies. Phenomenon explained to anyone, no one can understand. Some people will think they are hallucinating. Tonight, give them rest from the powers of darkness. It is my prayer, O oh God, that you will visit each one of us at a very personal level. And when you visit, your visits are never in vain. Whatever you want it to accomplish, it will to the glory and honor of your name. Give us peace that surpasseth all understanding to guard our minds and to guard our hearts. And may your name forever be glorified as we await for your second coming to reign with you in the new heavens and the new earth. This is our prayer by faith in Jesus' holy name. Let us rise for our song as we bring our prayer requests. Let me have all the elders come and then we shall pray. Sweet hour of prayer. Let us bring our prayer requests. Let us sing. Sweet hour of praise, hour of praise that calls me from the world and be. Sign with 
Gracious, loving Master God in heaven, we thank you again, this far your brothers, Lord. You have taught us about our life, the life of Job, as an example, that none of us has ever even gone through even a, a, a portion of what Job went through in his days as your servant. But at no moment did he also stop worshipping you. Lord God, we want to thank you because you really have brought us together this evening 
to bring us together to reflect on the life we live in these last days. We have used your servant, Pastor Elizabeth Mokoro, to remind us of the things we should be able to know about you, Lord. We have come to worship you this evening, knowing that this is our family live evangelism week, during which time, as your children have come, those who have come physically and those who are following this session virtually, and those who will be following later on, we call upon you, Lord God, to the Holy Spirit, that you may come and encamp around us all this time. May you bless and protect your servant who has, who has dedicated our life to do that which you have sent all of us to do, but you picked out among us the crowd to be able to do it for the glory and honor of your name. We pray for the leadership of our church here. We also pray for all those who have come. Amongst all of us who have come here this evening, Lord God, are those who have written a specific prayer request to share with you as, your, as, as, your, as their father, as their creator, as, as our master. And Lord God, behold these man's servants who have come this evening. As, as we lay our hands on the prayer requests that have been brought forward by your children, with the hope and trust that you will hear all the requests, they have come with their personal requests. They have come with their family requests. We have come with our communal requests. We have also come with our national requests and the global requests of our ability to convey your message to you, all the corners of this world. We have sinned against you in what we have said in different ways. We have sinned against you with what we have not said and which you should say. We have sinned against you by omissions and commissions. We might have sinned against you also for by even being silent when we should be speaking what we need to speak for your word to be, to be known. Lord God, we pray because all of us have different fears of our lives. We are fearing for tomorrow. We do not know. And all of us who are here have come to come and have a relationship with you. This relationship is supposed to be eternal. The challenges we might be going through in our places of work, in our families, in our communities, may not be for a long time. This are for a season. And for every time that you'll come, or the time we'll be able to come, Lord God, we'll be able to give us crowns of gold, and we will be able to forget all the challenges that we have gone through. Lord God, amongst us is a single mother who is struggling to make ends meet. Amongst us are widows and widowers. Amongst us are young people who are looking forward to getting married, or, look, or families who are looking forward to reuniting amongst themselves. We pray God. Some of, some of us here also are asking for economic breakthroughs. And we pray for them, Lord, that you may be able to hear their prayer requests. We pray, God, that you may be able to do your will for each one of us. Because we have prayed all this, trusting and believing in the holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. In heaven, by thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as this in heaven. Yesterday is our daily bread. And forgive those who trespass against us through this new temptation. And Christ the kingdom, the power, and the glory. In forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Good evening. Thank you for hearkening to our invite to come today. We also continue to breed, continue coming until we conclude the entire exercise on Sabbath afternoon. Uh, we have visitors, amidistas. May I see the visitors who are amidistas? Kindly may we stand anywhere we are, we have visitors with us.
Wonderful, wonderful. How do you say to our visitors? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Feel free, make this your place of worship. May God bless you. Thank you for coming. Come once again. Thank you. I want also to remind you, for those of us who have been privileged to have a car, some of us are not privileged to have one. As you move out, kindly consider in picking one or two as you dr drive them off this muddy area to the Tamak Road. May God bless all of us. May we meet tomorrow under the wings of his almighty God. Blessings. <laughs>